In the last video, we finished setting up recoil with all the atoms and hooks that we needed. But I mentioned towards the end of the video that it just didn't feel exactly right. It didn't feel as nice as having that single reducer with the actions and the dispatches that we had when we just had a simple context. So we're gonna try and recreate something pretty simpler, similar to that using the selector feature that comes from recoil. So to get a better handle on selectors, first let's create a specific selector for the app state. So we'll say const app state selector equals selector. Of course, we're going to need a key and we can take this one and there we go. I need this on a new line though, so I can actually see what I'm doing. And here with the selector, what's really nice is we can define a get method, pull out this get function, and then we can get multiple things and return all those things together. So we'll get the item IDs and we'll say get I item IDs atom. And then we can return the item IDs. We also want a few other things. We want the is reversed value. Get is reversed atom. And then we also want the items, but how are we going to get those? Because with the atom family that we had, the items atom family that we had, you have to actually pass in an ID. So we can map over the item IDs and pull out the ID, of course, pass it in. And that might work, but that actually just gives us a bunch of atoms. It doesn't give the values themselves. So what we need to do is we need to reach for another thing that comes from recoil called wait for all. And this is going to wait for all of those to be fetched, basically. And then with that, we can actually wrap that um, or put that inside of a git, and that will get all of them. So wait for all takes an array of atoms, it gets them all, waits for them, you know, and then rather it passes that to, some, to a git, and the git can know, okay, I'm waiting for all of them. Once they're all there, I'll return them. So we got item IDs is reversed and items that we're passing along, which is great. Now let's make sure this is working. Let's make sure that we can see this. So we'll make a, another function or another hook called use app state. And with that, we can return use recoil value app state selector. And then let's go into app.js and we'll create something else here that should help us out a little bit. We'll create a component called app state. Oop. And well, before we return anything, we actually want to get the app state itself. So we'll use app state, which comes from our app state. And then we're going to return some details with a pre tag. And inside of that, we'll do json.stringify because this is a big object that we've just now created, the app state. And then pass null as that second argument, and then two to give it a little bit of spacing. Now I want some style here, so we're going to say styles details and of course we need to create these in the styles object below and really all we need here is we just need to say white space equals no wrap and that should look good we'll put this in between our controls and our cards this isn't really necessary you know for actually making a good app but it's kind of a nice way to see what's going on so we can add an item we can remove an item we can reverse and we're seeing all of the app update and you know we got that with the ease of a selector we could combine all that stuff together so now let's leverage that selector on the setting side on actually setting multiple pieces of state all together. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to create a selector family. So that's a, a new kind of selector. It's actually very similar to the Atom family. So first let's give it a name, dispatch, oops, dispatch selector family. And you know, this is giving a pretty good hint that we're actually going to create a sort of dispatch thing here. So we're going to do selector family. So with that, we need the key first, as always, everything in recoil needs a key so that you can look it up. And then here, we're not actually gonna do a git. Um, some people maybe, you know, I think it may be uh, that you usually wanna git with every select you have, but here we're really using this selector to create a specific kind of setter. So with that, we'll do the set and we'll do the git and the set, and that will return something, right? But since this is a selector family, first it takes some, op or some not optional, but some params at the beginning. We're gonna call it a type. So this type is actually gonna be that value that we had before. I'm gonna pull these over so I don't have to just keep on rewriting a bunch of things. Let me delete this. Um, and these are all the types that we have. They're all just all these strings. And with that, we're gonna have a big switch statement just like the reducer we had before. So again, I'm gonna copy and paste some stuff that we had previously. I'm gonna copy and paste the big switch statement that we had before. So of course, some things are kind of broken. We can get rid of that, that action.type and that helps a lot. And all of these, I'm just going to delete the logic. You know, we could try to surgically, you know, fix them all, but I think it's just easier to get 
things back to a you know working space at least not have all these errors over here and then we can figure out what we want to do we'll delete the draft we don't really need that and add an eslint you know we basically is just saying we know what we're doing we know that we're using all the right things here you know we're containing this and if we were using something like typescript we could be much much more uh secure in what we're doing as well uh, of course we have the set initial data which we're going to fill out so we'll add that case as well which will be nice because that'll get rid of that ugly um kind of weird awkward hook that we had and so with that, what do we want to do? Well, we want to use this actual dispatch uh, selector family. So I'm going to copy and paste a little bit more because at, um, basically what we're creating here is a bunch of boilerplate and it's not very interesting for me to type, but basically we're overriding all of these functions that we previously had with these dispatch selector families. And we're just going ahead and tying in the type that they need for each of these. And then wrapping that in use set recoil state because that will pull out the setter. So next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we delete these. Not that one, but this one. So we're going to remove all of this. We don't need that anymore. Like it's sort of that use effect, which is nice. We have a use remove item. We need to delete that as well. We have a use reverse items IDs. We'll delete that one. And what's left? The use reset data. And then that use toggle, which I think might just be, um, I can look it up. Oh, there it is. Use toggle choice. So we want to get rid of that too which is really nice. So we got rid of a bunch of things. We don't need this reset item selector. This is all actually going to go away. Um, so I really love deleting things. It, it makes me pretty happy. We're gonna use that though. We'll come back here. So all these are set up. Nothing is you know, broken as far as like, we're not getting errors, but of course nothing actually works. So let's use the logic. The add item is gonna be the most important one probably to add first so we can get some items, you know, so we can see what's going on. But before we do that, we wanna create a couple of little helpers inside of this to make updating these pieces of state or these atoms rather a little bit easier. So we have a const update item IDs. It'll take in a recipe. A recipe comes from Emmer. Um, it's basically just the um, you know anonymous function or whatever that you pass, or it doesn't have to be anonymous, that you pass in that tells it how to update the state that it has. So we'll say const new item IDs equals produce. And then first we'll pass in the get item IDs atom. So this will actually get the item IDs as they stand right then and we'll pass uh, along the recipe. So with produce, usually we actually just have the recipe and then that creates a curried function, which you can apply to you know whatever values you have. But here we're doing it an alternate way that uh, Emmer allows you to do by first passing in the thing that you're trying to mutate or rather create a copy of and then the recipe that acts like it's mutating. It tells it how to update it in a mutable way. And then finally, we're going to set item IDs atom and the second argument is always what you want to set it to so new item IDs great let's do a similar one called const update item and in this case we need an item ID as well as the recipe so we can return that and we'll say const item atom equals items atom family and then item atom that's why we pass that in right there so with that we can update it const updated item equals oops not recipe produce take the item uh well sorry get the item atom and pass in the recipe so we can we're not returning anything we'll set the item atom to the updated item and we got these two helpers those will make life a lot easier and kind of reduce on a lot of the clutter down here and repeated code that we're going to get so back to add item we're going to say const item ids we need this to get the length so we'll get item IDs, atom. And then here we can say new item equals create new item. Oops. Uh, create new item, which comes from our fake data item IDs dot length. And then with that, we can say set items atom family with new item dot ID and new item. And then we can use our little helper up here, this update item IDs, pass in draft, and then say void draft.push this new item with its new ID. And then we have the add items, they actually showed up, so that's encouraging, it's a good sign, and they're all working. Let's do remove item, that's always an easy one, so update item IDs. We'll take draft void draft.pop, and that will make it to where we can remove them. All right, everything's working so far so good. We didn't have to change any other files. That's always really nice. Let's do the reverse list. So we'll say update item IDs, draft, void draft.reverse. And then 
set is reversed atom to the opposite of git is reversed atom. So here we didn't really create a helper because we're just updating it this one time. We don't really need that. Um, and so it's easier just to do it in line. So then what else do we need? Well, let's do the toggle choice before we get reversed. Let's make sure this works. Of course it does. Let's do the toggle choice. So this one, you know, should feel pretty familiar. We're going to be doing very similar things. Um, the one thing that I need, do need to point out is we have to get, of course, the item ID and the option key from the action. So where does that action come from? Well, it's not being, let's actually not call it an action. It's called a payload. Uh, it's not coming from anywhere right now, but what we can do is you can always pass in a second argument here. And what this looks like is, let me actually go down to the bottom and see how we're using it. So with use, you know, with the dispatch family selector, we passed in the type. That was that first piece of this uh, kind of function chain that we're creating. The second piece pulls out the get in the set, but it also says, okay, you could pass something else in. And here we're going to pass in the payload. In all the other cases, we're not seeing how we're using it now. We just call the function itself. We don't pass anything else. But in this case, you know, we're going ahead and saying like, hey, we're going to pass in that item ID and we're going to pass in the option key. And we built it in this way just so that we don't have to go into the other files and change anything. So this will just work, which is great. So we got those that we need. We're going to say update item. We'll say item ID. That's the first argument. And then that draft with that, we'll say const option equals draft dot options option key. So this should feel like second nature, we've written this about uh, three or four times at this point. And we're good. That sets up the toggle choice and it just works, which is really great. So last two, first the reset data one. Um, so of course we need to get the is reversed, get is reversed, Adam. Then we say if it is reversed, oop, not is reversed, Adam, that would always be true. Then what we're going to do is, you know, do all this logic. But instead of doing all this logic, we can do something really cool. We can just say set dispatch selector family with this. So we actually pass it in. And so because selectors act as like atoms and everything, when you have a setter and you pass it in, it's going to pull out that set method and just use it. So we can just use the reverse list here and it will work exactly like we want it to, which is cool. Then we need to get the item IDs, get item IDs atom. And from there, we're going to go through each of them. So for each, we'll take the ID and with a new, or oops, sorry. Uh, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself for ID. Okay, there we pass it in. And then we need to update the item. We made that helper before. It takes in the ID and then a draft. So a couple little nesting here. Const options equals object.values draft.options. That gets us an array of all of the values. Options dot for each, and then option option dot value equals false. So the you know the reset cases they're all false. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll reverse things. We'll add a couple more, and we'll click reset. So that got reversed. You know, of course, we we're adding things out of order, but it worked exactly like we wanted, which is really great. If we reset preferences, it gets really reversed, which is super super cool um that that just works like that all right finally uh what's left we want to set this initial data right so we're how would we do this well we can take the fake data and we can say for each we'll get each item in the fake data there's just two but you know we can change that and then we'll say update item with the item dot id and we'll say you know we'll pass in that uh, anonymous function here we're really just updating the item itself then we're going to say update item IDs, fake, oops, fake data dot map ID, and then, oops, we just want the ID. So here we're just updating it with that. Of course, we need to spell things correctly, as always. And there we've got our set initial data. And we're not actually using this anywhere at the moment, but we have it set up to where it should work. So what's the easiest way to do it? Well, the easiest way to do it is to create um, another component called add initial data. So we're going to go ahead and put that up here. So we're going to say function add initial data. And this will just be a higher order component. So we'll take in the, or pass in the children. And here we'll say const set initial data equals use set recoil state. And then dispatch selector family with set initial data. That's pretty nested, so Prettier is going to fix that up for us. 
And we'll say, okay, so is this mounted? We'll use a ref for that. And we'll say, no, it's not. Um, of course, we need to pull this in. It's not initially mounted, so there's just a little trick to keep track of, hey, have we set something up or not? And then with that, we'll say use effect if not mounted dot current. Of course, we need to pull up the current. If you're not familiar with use ref, you can look it up in the docs. And we'll say set initial data. And then we'll say mounted dot current equals true. So basically, it's not going to reset that initial data. It'll just do it that one time. We can return the children. Now, where do we actually want to add this? Well, we probably want to add it where you know the app is. But let's go ahead and do something that we had before that was kind of nice and create an app state provider. So we'll say uh, export default function app state provider, and this will take in the children. It's going to return a recoil root with add addition or sorry initial items. And then that will take in the children. Looks like I accidentally used a hook here. Didn't mean to do that. And it's not super happy here because we don't actually have React being pulled in. So there we go. So we got that app state provider, which should just work. Let's pull it in from our app state right here. Oops. And instead of the recoil root, we'll say app state provider. And we'll delete that. And everything works exactly right. Now, of course, we have more items than we need, and that's because in cards, we don't need this use added at initial items anymore, which, again, I thought kind of felt kind of awkward. So use initial, uh, maybe initial items. We can probably delete this at this point, and it should all be good because we're not using that anymore. And that means we're not using state anymore. We don't need to keep track of stuff, which is really nice. So that just cleaned a lot of things up for us and made things just so much nicer. And then we've got this really cool, you know, kind of switch statement sort of thing going with this, you know, dispatch. And it feels a lot more like a reducer, um, given that, you know, this is a specific kind of boilerplate setup that you, you might have to learn. But I think it'd be pretty easy to abstract this out into, you know, some sort of function or, or utility that you can just pull in and set things up pretty easily. But yeah, definitely play with this. I mean, I just made this up for this because I felt like it was so much easier than what I had before. Um, and it made it just a lot easier to bridge the gap between what Recoil is doing and what I'm really used to with React while still giving me the benefit of, you know, my components subscribing to state and things updating how I wanted them to. Um, and it's really cool that if for some reason we do need the entire state, we can just put it all together inside of a selector and then you've got it and it's good. So that's really all I have for this course. I really hope that this taught you a lot. I hope that you had fun with recoil and if you didn't know how to use memoization correctly or context or any of the other topics that we went over i hope that you know this gave you a way better insight into all of those things if you have any questions you can reach out to me on twitter at brooks librand um, that's my handle you can ask any questions you want there or you can just go to the repo and you know raise an issue if you really have a question and, and aren't on twitter but i hope you enjoyed this course and i hope it taught you a thing or two thanks